Okay, everyone, good morning. <clears throat> so this will the seminar is on uh, contact mechanics, both the theory and the finite element uh, analysis. To start with, uh, let us see what is the historical background of uh, going into the contact mechanics. What makes this contact mechanics and the historical background? where we had the advantage and the disadvantage that is mainly because of causing the friction between the contact surfaces and this friction which is one of the usage in the stone age where the stone age people used to light the fire with the help of the friction between the two surfaces at the same time later on in the egyptian history we find for that for the transportation of the stones during the building of the pyramids, the stones surfaces were very rough and moving these stones, uh, huge stones was very tough. And hence they used to lubricate this to reduce the friction. So this is opposing the friction and one is using the friction. Similarly, whenever there is a contact between the surfaces being a mechanical engineer we can make use of this uh, friction either for any usefulness or it is, can be opposed uh, where its usefulness of opposing the friction will be an added advantage now the studies of the contact was first uh, been in the 14th century by as we all know that uh, we are not Don Kovic was the first person who just observed that due to this contact, uh, he was being able to create what he called it as the notebook, where a lot of information and data were being stored. And then in the 16th century, Newton studied the interaction between the bodies, and similarly. As the year goes on, Euler was one of the key person who studied the friction between the rough surfaces and he developed the theory of friction. And even today we are using that and this has been happened in the 17th century. And later on, again in the 17th century, this friction uh, theory was being upgraded by Coulomb where the Coulomb theory even still today for the uh, dry surfaces holds good and even we use this uh, theory for determining the friction coefficients between the dry surfaces. And the main thing which is uh, uh, study was being based uh, completely on the contact phenomena was uh, being done by the Henrik uh, Hertz and he is the first person to say that that the contact of the deformable bodies will be having an effect in the properties or the functioning of the bodies so he was conducting some experiment uh, in which uh, initially he was uh, conducting the experiments on light passing through glass media or lenses and when the lenses were being stacked together, he observed that the light properties were being different. And hence, he got uh, some information that uh, due to the deformation at the contacts of the lenses, which are of convex and concave shapes, plays a predominant in the behavior of the light properties. And that is what uh, he just started about how exactly in the contact that the uh, contact properties are going to be having an effect and uh, in literature it has been observed that it is a first paper which is been uh, published in the name of contact uh, of uh, lenses which has been done in the 
by hertz and that's how most of the theories in the contact problems are being based on what we call it as hertzian contact problems so all the initial basic fundamental theories are being developed by hertz and even today these hertz uh, theory is being adopted uh, for the calculations and other useful mess in the elastic bodies then in the 19th century with the invention of uh, the theoretical and the advancement in the technology and in mathematics everything played a key role in going into the details of the contact zone because initially the contact zone wherein the uh, surface finish was not being treated they used to consider whatever the contact region is there is being taken into account and all the experiments were being assumed on that uh, basis where the contact is going to be prevailing for the entire region but when it uh, comes to the microscopic point of view when the surfaces were being absorbed there was a waviness in the surfaces and hence whatever the assumptions which are being made for the contact area and due to this wavy waviness and those areas were being called as the apparent contact whereas the actual real contact which has been in contact with the bodies are being evaluated and based on these real contact uh, zones the uh, theories were being developed and then the parameters which are going to be involving in the failures were being studied and which has been giving us a uh, much more uh, accurate result because uh, due to this contact which is not going to be occurring on the entire region there is uh, a slight uh, variations in the contact uh, zones and this actual contacts it is exactly considered during the process of the calculations are being considered and hence uh, an accurate much more accurate results were being determined so the difference between the apparent and the real contact areas and the friction versions and the addition theories were also being incorporated in the 19th century so later on the theories were being developed so all these things whatever which we have been uh, uh, looking at the backgrounds are being completely based on the most of the time it is based on the experiments wherein the experiments were being conducted and when they conduct they have been observing one or the other things and based on this experimental information the actual values have been tabulated and then how exactly it is going to be has been predicted completely because 90 percent of the problems which have been solved before 19th century is completely based on the practice which they usually come across and the real practice were been put on to the experiments and the studies were being done but uh, these are found to be a little bit a cumbersome process and uh, uh, incorporating the actual situations were also being found in difficult and at that time the theoretical part was not much of the interest in the scientist uh, area but later on in the 19th century with the development uh, of the technology the application of the science into engineering and then with the development of the mathematical tools and with the inventions of the electronic industry that is uh, when the computers were being incorporated and that is where the numerical techniques were being incorporated and the digital computers were being more powerful in solving these numerical problems or even the engineering problems were being converted into the numerical values and the methodologies were being developed and using the computers people were being able to solve this problem and hence uh, in the later on uh, after 1960 the theory became more problem predominant when compared to the practice because in practice there were life situations 
where we in very cumbersome process to create and then destructive coral process were been very highly uh, not economical so with all this theory was very fastly developed in the later on uh, 1960 so that's uh, the theory if you see in the 19th century even though there were been lot of information but it was a burden nobody used to look into the details in the theoretical aspect whereas the practice they used to do conduct the experiment create the real situations and try to arrive at the solutions by conducting the experiments as i told you in the 1940s theory was just behind the practice because as we see newton eulers and many more scientists uh, they came into the picture and they gave much more information which are theoretically based and that was been giving us a more uh, uh, clear uh, things for the actual situations uh, and that's uh, the theory was been catching up the practice uh, in 1940s and later on as the technology developed and with the mathematical tools which are been developed in 1960 we find that the finite element analysis was being introduced to solve most of the engineering problem and this finite element method is nothing but a mathematical tool which is been giving us a systematic procedure of solving the problem and with this help we have been able to solve many complicated engineering problem and thereby the actual practice that is conducting the experiments and other things it was a cumbersome process and also it was not economical most of the people try to shift over the theoretical aspect and after this it has grown widely and the theory is now beating the practice because whatever the practice uh, which is actual situation where when we conduct the experiments there will be a lot of trial and error uh, methods and these trial and error uh, becomes more and more difficult and thereby the theory nowadays leaves the practice i think hardly we see conducting of the experiment especially in the case of uh, contact mechanics is very very minimal so most of the time it is been depending on the theoretical uh, formulation and the numerical solutions of the problems and thus today we are away head from the actual practice in when compared to the experiments which is been conducted in many of the industry they prefer to have the theoretical numerical solutions now the type of scales of contact uh, we have been defined in the three ways uh, a scale of contact one is at the nano scale wherein at the molecular level the atomic level the contacts can be having an effect uh, with the van der waals forces and casimir effects uh, uh, during the formation of the material itself and that can also be studied uh, in the contact me mechanics at the nano scale and when it comes to the macro scale where the roughness and microstructures of the uh, surface of the materials plays a key role in the contact mechanics and these surface roughness and as i told you whenever we have this contact the surfaces should be as smooth as possible and if there is a waviness in the surface and that we has to be taken into account as many of the scientists look into the contact area which has the apparent area con area of contact and the actual real area of contact so the ratio of this will also play a key role in the contact mechanic analysis then at the macro scale one will be interested in knowing the stress strain state uh, of the contacting solid and that too if these are been repeated what you call it as the fatigue loading and due to this fatigue loading there may be a chances of lot of failures in this so here you have shown an example of a, a railway wheel uh, the wagon of a railway wheel uh, which is having contact with the rails 
and one can see that uh, the failing of either the wheel or the ra rails is going to be critical because it is going to give us yes, uh, a loss of uh, humanity and hence uh, careful study of these two components has to be appropriately treated and try to analyze and the design should be based on uh, taking into account all these aspects. Now the contact mechanics that usually appears in all the areas of engineering. So to start with the mechanical engineering, so many of the components, whatever which we have today, we don't find a single component uh, because so most of the products have been made up of multiple components which are being assembled. And when it has been assembled in one or the other way, there is a contact and hence the contact mechanics is going to be a very key in the analysis sector and it is going to be involving in the designing of the product. And they, with this uh, contact, we can see that uh, the friction can be reduced uh, in the by using the ball bearings or the roller bearings and the journal bearings in which the contact mechanics is going to be a very very critical one to design the ball or the roller the bearing race and other things now contact mechanics as I is being considered in the uh, industry automotive industries uh, especially in the case of a uh, railway wagon uh, where the wheels of the rail and the rails will be um, having the contact and that too, it is going to be uh, repeatedly having the contact which we call it as the fatigue loading and due to this fatigue loading the rails are going to be failing at a particular point and if this thing has been noted, so one can see that when the load which has been acted by the wagon onto the wheel, which in turn transmits to the rails, and the rails are going to be actually bent, and due to the friction and the forces, there is a friction, there is the high stresses which are going to be induced in that. And since it is going to be repeatedly acting, one after the other uh, wheels will be in contact at that particular point after an intermittent of time and thereby it is going to be a fatigue loading and due to this fatigue loading and due to the loads and the contact the stresses are going to be peak and uh, the cracks may be developed uh, at the contact as well. Now the contact mechanics in the aerospace engineering again and another area on the engineering where we find that uh, whichever the technology exists on the earth one can find all the technology has been incorporated in the aerospace engineering whether it is mechanical whether it's civil electrical electronics computers all these things have been incorporated but in all this uh, as the mechanical engineers will be interested to know the components which are being involved in the uh, aerospace industries where the contacts are being the predominant so here we have listed uh, certain components which usually have the contact as in the case of a compressor a blade and the rotor and the uh, turbine blades and the connectivity between the rotor on the shaft then the landing gaze which is going to be having contact during the landing and takeoff which is going to be playing the key role in the analysis now the contact mechanics as in electrical engineering to for the power generation wherein again the windmill has been used and in that here is wherever the contacts are which are been playing the key role has been highlighted so one can see that how critical is the contact mechanics in the design of any component whether it is uh, mechanical aerospace or electrical similarly in the case of chemical engineering where the viscosity of the fluid plays the key role 
and this viscosity the adhesion your know, properties of the fluid and other things will also be taken into the account in the chemical engineering uh, industry wherein the study of contact uh, mechanics will be predominant then coming to the biomedical today we can see there are a lot of implants in the human body when there is a fracture the bones are being replaced by metals or composites and most of the time the accidents are which are been occurring into the human body it is going to be having the effect on the joints instead of other region it is the joints which is going to be failing and due to this uh, failures uh, the replacement of this joint is a very cumbersome process and this has been done successfully with the help of the uh, studies that are been done in the contact mechanics and here you can see that uh, wherein the joint uh, the hip joint is uh, been uh, uh, implanted with the titanium uh, material wherein you have the acetabular component uh, which is running into the uh, femoral head uh, in between that uh, we have the fluid which is going to be acting as a, a lubricant so for the modeling it is been considered to be as a plastic uh, material where the viscosity of this can be specified and based on that uh, one can study the exact contact behavior of the joint and here we can just run an example how exactly when the movement of this uh, joints which are in plan i uh, can be operated and then uh, one can study in detail how exactly the contact uh, changes its position and due to this uh, what is its uh, effect on the other parts and that is again going to be very very critical so based on this uh, one can uh, look into the actual situations and here one interesting thing which i have found that uh, is been done by a german scientist uh, in which he was interested in uh, knowing uh, the detailed study of the lizard how it is going to be walked on the ceiling so it is gliding on the ceiling so what are the parameters which is going to be involved and what it can be the type of uh, surfaces of the limbs of the lizard was been modeled and he has uh, tried to create uh, the simulate the exact situation and he has come out with the parameters which is going to be involved on this so based on this many other things are being developed uh, in the chemical engineers now coming to the exact uh, contact mechanics uh, when we try to solve as i told you many of the problems which are being based on the uh, study is uh, day back to the 17th century from hertz even today those theories holds good hence the first and the foremost thing one has to look at is uh, the theoretical and the mathematical formulation of these contact problem and once that is been done one has to validate the methodology and then when we try to solve the problem one can look at uh, the way in which uh, the methodology is been developed and how exactly the solutions are being arrived at now for this the theory and the mathematical formulation is the first and the foremost thing one has to do in the contact mechanics is in a given uh, frame of reference the boundary surface has to be looked upon and most of the time this boundary surface is been considered in the cartesian xy coordinate system whereas the z axis is been directed into the elastic or the solid uh, which are in contact now the load strips are being parallel to the x axis and as a width uh, a plus b that is along the x direction so that the problem a three dimensional problem can be treated to be as a two dimensional case as a plane strain problem so hence a line contact is considered along the y axis now the load switch does not vary along the y axis but it is can be considered to be as a function of x axis as shown in this figure so this kind of uh, um, but, uh, mathematical uh, 
components or the mechanical components or the assumptions of the loads, how exactly it is to be. Then based on this, uh, the analytical or uh, the theoretical formulations are being done and the formulas are being evolved based on the theories uh, which have been well developed long back. Now these uh, kind of uh, benchmark problems has to be looked upon. Now where the region where the loads are been acting can be considered to be as a contact region. Now here to start with a point contact where the load can be treated to be as a single concentrated force. And due to this single concentrated force, what is going to be the stresses which is going to be induced in the elastic body. So here, when we formulate the problem of such kind, we find or we call this elastic body as an elastic half space. Because taken into symmetry, and the problem is considered to be as a plain stain problem, and thereby the analysis can be uh, reduced to a two-dimensional case and the normal forces are considered and the tangential forces can also be varied at that particular point. So with these uh, assumptions, one will be trying to formulate and as I told you, the first and the foremost thing which has been uh, giving us the analytical solution by Timoshenko is uh, a concentrated force acting on an elastic half space. So this concentrated force is going to be acting at the origin where the xy plane is the top surface of the plane and the z axis is going inside the body of the solid. Then one can determine the stress at any point within the solid. And here it has been observed that the stresses at the point of contact is going to be playing as a singularity. The mathematical formulation, whatever which we get, the stress at the point of contact will have a singularity which is not of our interest, but just underneath the point of contact, the stress shoots up to a very high value. And it has been found that it is going to be six times the normal stress which has been induced in the body at the further distance apart from the point of application of the loading. So and the formulas which are being derived for this is being given as sigma x uh, by this equation. So using this standard equation, now one can determine what is going to be the contact stresses just underneath the point of contact uh, in the direction of x and z axis. So similarly, along the, in the plane, the shear stress which is going to be developed. And this is what which we call it as a benchmark problem for a point contact. And this can be analyzed later on in the slide, which will be slowing. Yeah, after the performing the finite element analysis uh, with the variations of the z value at different points within the body, just underneath the point of contact, one can see that uh, at a point distance of uh, 5 mm, the stress is shooting up nearly to 120 newton per millimeter square. Whereas at the very nearer to that, away, away from the point of contact, the stresses are reduced. So as you go nearer, it shoots up. So, and this is what which it makes very, very critical in the solution. And this another example in the as a standard benchmark problem is an indentation of a flat punch. Because in most of the press working operation, which we come across that uh, during the forming process, the punch resides in the, into the die and the sheet metals are to be formed to a particular shape and during which the stresses which is going to be induced in the component should not be too excessive. If it is going to be too excessive, then it is going to be creating a crack or it is going to be failing. Whereas it has to be stress beyond elastic, but within a certain limit. And at the same time, it should be retaining its shape and size as it is being formed. And for that, one has to know what exactly the stresses which is going to be induced in these uh, sheets or in the plates. And which uh, the contact mechanics formulation is very, very critical. And here are exactly the pressure distribution which is going to be occurring. 
starting from the center it is going to have but as it comes to the near way to the end where there is a change in the geometric section the stresses are going to be shooting to a very high value now the type of contact uh, for the benchmark problem where, where the numerical or the analytical formulations are being derived and the equations which we can directly use for any type of component here two bodies have been considered and which is going to have two concentric curvatures so at the minimum uh, curve uh, radius of curvature is been treated by r1 and r2 for the top body and the bottom body and the maximum radius of curvatures are being treated as r1 dash and r2 dash so here you can see that along the thickness it has a minimum radius as a radius r1 dash and the second body as r2 dash now these curvatures will play a key role in the formulation and using this uh, uh, parameters and the type of loads which is going to be acting one will be able to get the information how exactly the deformation is going to be occurring and how the contact will grow as the load increases and that is this is one of the basic study and the formulas are being derived and uh, using this study it has been observed that at the point of contact initially when there is no load there is a point contact of point contact and as the load increases one will be observing that the region grows in an elliptical surface and hence the contact uh, surface area will be an ellipse and it is been found even in the mathematically for that particular problem the uh, surface that is the contours of the region of contact have given the equation as x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 now this equation is a very well known equation in mathematics which is an equation of ellipse and thus we prove that the surface area of contact as the load increases when it has a point contact without load and as the load increases the surface is going to trace a concentric elliptical surfaces and similarly the stresses at this particular point which are going to be compressive in nature and then the maximum shear plane is we can be determined which is going to be helpful for the failure of structures now the way in which how uh, these surfaces are being determined is first we take a datum line where a common tangential plane has been incorporated at the point of contact between the two surface body and in the plane of the curvature we consider a chord that is cd which is going to be at a distance of z1 along the z axis now using the geometry of this knowing the inclinations of this chord and the bottom so one can arrive at what is going to be the coordinates at the point c and d so these coordinates when we observe can be will be expressed by this equation now this equation is nothing but mathematically it is a equation of an ellipse and thus one can determine the point g on any of these corresponding contours as the load increases now at the beginning when there is no load the point contact it coincides at the center and as the load increases the concentric ellipse keeps on increasing and this is the theoretical law uh, formulations which has been already been done and uh, in that region the pressure which is going to be developed in the contact zone is again been uh, formulated and the mathematical expression are been derived to evaluate the pressure at the contact zone which is been increased from a point contact to an elliptical surface Uh, coming to the contact algorithm which has been uh, widely used in the software so basically what makes this uh, contact analysis so complicated now the region of contact is typically unknown in the starting of the analysis because 
many times it may not be having the contact during certain duration of time and as uh, the loads are being applied and as the uh, bodies are going to be deformed the contact will be developed and again this contact initially it may be a point then it may be a line and then it may be surface but we cannot say we, this is what it is going to be exactly happen and that's how the path uh, how exactly the contact is going to be is a very very critical thing and the next thing is uh, between the surfaces whether the friction is going to be incorporated into it if the friction is not there the formulations are going to be different if the friction exists it again uh, becomes a little bit complicated because the friction which is going to be having uh, normal tangential axial so all the types of friction effects has to be taken into account so and the, the contact problems which includes the friction will be a friction which is a path dependent as i told you whether it is going to be acting normally or tangentially or axially so all these things has to be for which uh, one has to know how exactly the uh, forces which are going to be acting and how the forces is going to be considered and uh, whether these forces is going to remain for a long duration of time or if i set an intermittent uh, force now the frictional response may be chaotic uh, making the solution convergence difficult and that is why this contact mechanics is going to be very critical the parts might be unconstrained except for the contact with other parts there are many situations in which the contacts are uh, not been constrained it is only at the contact uh, it has the connection then in such case analysis becomes too difficult because uh, the constraint in the rigid body motion of the body has to be constrained at one or the other point for the analysis thereby prior to the establishment of the contact such parts are initially unconstrained free bodies with uh, nothing because it is a rigid body it won't be deforming then suddenly when the movements are being considered into account then there is a contact and this contact causes high energy stresses in the contacts so in a static analysis unconstrained free bodies are mathematically unstable because when there is no constraint it becomes unstable to make it stable one has to have the boundary conditions or else in the finite element analysis the solution blows up that means the component will fly away to the infinite region in which uh, the rigid body motion is not constrained in a particular direction now in most of the contact mechanics the most physical sense of the surfaces uh, that are in contact have these characteristics uh, they are not uh, interpenetrating because you can say there is an example in which a net is being removed from by using a spanner or when a automotive is running on a road the tire having contact on the roads so those are all not uh, causing uh, interpenetration between the bodies it is just having the surface similarly the uh, railway wagon wheels which are running on the rails it is not going to cause much of the city but it is not uh, into penetrating into the surface but on the surface but the forces are going to be very high and they can transmit very high compressive normal force and tangential friction force but uh, these contact uh, they often do not transmit tensile normal force because it is opposing the contact tensile forces they are therefore free to separate and move away from each other that is reducing the contact so based on this the algorithms are being derived whether the type of uh, contact status is being looked upon so in the algorithm most of the time it becomes a non linear uh, properties because there is a change in the status there is no contact then it comes to a close contact then again it is going to be a close contact with the friction with the uh, without friction there is a sliding so all these cases are being taken into account based on that in the software the options are supposed to be specified 
Now, whenever the status is specified as zero, that means the initial contact is uh, open. When we specify that it is one, the initial contact is open, but it is nearer to the field. That means at any time it may come and have the contact. So when we specify the code to be a status has to be two, then it has a close contact uh, with the sliding. Or when we substitute the status to be as three, and it is going to specify that the uh, contact is completely close and there is a sticking between the surfaces. So these are the different types of uh, algorithms which are being used based on the uh, contact status. Now, whenever there is uh, any particular uh, contact status throughout the analysis, the analysis converges the results easily. But when there is a change in the status of the contact, the convergence of the results are very, very vague. And that has to be taken care into account during the solutions using the analysis, during the analysis. Now the contact is strongly nonlinear because both the normal and the tangential stiffness at the contact surface changes significantly with the change in the contact status. Now as you see, when there is open, there is no friction as the close there is a lot of friction. Thus, large and sudden change in the stiffness often causes severe convergence difficulty in the analysis. Now again, the uh, type of uh, classification of the contacts uh, in the algorithms is being going to be uh, classified under two general categories, uh, whether the contacting surfaces are being uh, both uh, rigid or flexible. That means rigid means that the deformation within the body is not considered. It acts as though it is a rigid body. Whenever we consider it to be as a flexible, then there is an internal deformation in it. What we call it as a deformable body and rigid body. So based on this, one can uh, perform the contact uh, mechanics or solve the contact mechanics problem. So it all depends upon the engineering judgment, how exactly we have supposed to uh, specify the contact uh, classifications uh, and classify it to which particular component should be rigid and which is uh, should be flexible or whether both should be flexible or both should be rigid. So rigid to flexible means one component is uh, which is having the contact is considered to be as a rigid wherein internally it will never have any deformation. So one surface has significantly very high stiffness than the other. So in the many metal forming problems, uh, we take this category in which uh, the tools, that is the punch and the die, is being made to be as uh, rigid, whereas the sheet which has to be formed is made to be flexible. Now the stresses within the rigid body is not at all calculated as soon as you declare it to be as a, a rigid body. Then when you have, uh, even in the case of uh, rolling operations, uh, the deformable body is taken to be as flexible, whereas the uh, rollers are being considered to be as rigid. Now it can be both flexible, flexible, as in the case of spline couplings, or in the case of gear teeth. So in which both the deformations are going to be playing their predominant. So the spine coupling teeth will be having in contact and at the same time the power is being transmitted through one shaft to the another shaft. The driving and the driven shaft has to be considered to be as both as the flexible then only one can analyze. So here I have taken some of the examples which are solved for the benchmark problem and try to verify the finite element uh, solutions so with the analytical solutions. And here you can see that this is one of an uh, elastic half space which has been subjected to a point load. And we saw that uh, in the theory, we arrive at the equations. And this equation, substituting the values, the theoretical value of the stresses was found to be 1.59. And even in the FEM result, you can find this result. That is 1.59, which is going to be. And the uh, way in which uh, the variation of this stresses are being plotted for both theory and as well as the finite element solution. Now the continuous line is the theoretical solution. 
and the colored line is going to be the finite element solution. So here the finite element solutions uh, uh, results are been tabulated. One can use this formula and for a particular load and at a particular distance in the body is uh, graph is been plotted and it can be clearly observed that both the curves are going to be coinciding and hence uh, whatever the methodology which we have adopted to solve the problem can consider to be as an accurate one. And this is what uh, for that particular uh, analysis, the stress distributions which are being found to be. And again, another uh, uh, values when it is being subjected to normal pressure, the graphs are been plotted for both theoretical and experimental. And here you can see that in the finite element solution, since it has been discretized to a finite uh, number, whereas in the analytical solution, it is a continuous, so if this point is the singularity point at which which is not being treated whereas this is going to be the actual uh, stress distribution and the contour plots for the same analysis is being shown here and another case in which uh, the tangential traction force is been taken in the calculations for the semi uh, elastic plate so here also you one can observe that uh, the theoretical and the FEM solutions are more accurate uh, near the contact zone. Just away from the contact zone, there is a very small radiation, but too, it is very, very negligible. Now, another good example of a contact mechanics as a benchmark problem is a shrink fit problem, in which uh, even from the basic strength of material, we have compound cylinders, which are shrunk on uh, two. And these cylinders uh, can sustain very high internal or external pressures. Thus, uh, by creating an interference fit, or what you call it as the shrink fit, one can observe what is going to be the pressure which is going to be developed at the contact of the two inner and outer cylinder. And hence, uh, due to this contact pressure which has been developed, due to the uh, changes in the geometry of the dimensions, an interference fit is being provided. When this interference fit is assembled by using the shrink fit assembly process, that is by heating the outer component, it expands, and by cooling the inner component, it contracts, and both are being assembled. When it comes to room temperature, there is going to be a very high contact pressure developed in the contact zone between the two surfaces. That is, at the outer surface of the inner component, and the inner surface of the outer components are being subjected to a very high contact pressure for which uh, the solutions, the analytical formulas are being used by using the Lamis equation and the verification is being done by using the finite element uh, analysis and that is being found. So here you can observe that uh, the finite element solutions and the analytical solution results which are being plotted along the thickness of the cylinder, both the radial and as well as the tangential stress components. And both are exactly coinciding. And uh, then we'll see that uh, how exactly the contact wizard can be made use for uh, analyzing the contact problem. Because unless and until you come to know how exactly, what is the steps which you are supposed to give and how exactly the contact elements has to be created and how exactly the solution controls are to be adopted and how exactly the load steps control should be adopted. All those things can be achieved only by solving a uh, known solution wherein the analytical uh, formulations and the formulas are existing and then make that one to validate or coinciding the result. Then one can get the methodology in the finite element uh, package how exactly and what is the element types and uh, how exactly the control parameters in the wizard of contact mechanics algorithm has to be performed. Another example in the dovetail joint of a turbine blade uh, which has been mounted on the uh, shaft where the contact is going to be playing the key role for holding the uh, blades and that has been uh, uh, study for uh, damage tolerance analysis. At the contact zone, one can see that uh, it is being very fine mesh so that uh, the stresses are going to be more accurate. 
and uh, there due to the fatigue loading there is a sliding chances and due to this sliding the variation of the friction has been uh, taken into account and uh, due to this variation of friction one can observe how exactly the hoof stress uh, for the different uh, speed of the turbine rotor uh, blade disc is going to be varied and similarly at the contact region so how exactly the variation of the stresses is going to be has also been calculated and the application of finite element analysis into the biomedical as i told you for the uh, bone joint uh, replacement in plant this is one of the case which we have done for one of the study where the joint uh, has the femoral end and the firm bottom the contact uh, region how exactly it is going to be behaving uh, what is the amount of stresses which is going to be induced for different load which is coming on the hip has been studied in this case so this all about the uh, contact mechanics uh, and just i have given a brief uh, of this an outline the detail of these things what individual thing which i have uh, just uh, up, uploaded here it is going to be dealt in detail with the mathematical formulations in our regular course so if one is interested into the detailed depth of this uh, one can opt for the visit our website and see the detail of the courses which we have and in this particular course uh, we can see that uh, we deal with uh, what is the mean uh, objective of the course then we have the description of the course what are the things which will be deciding and then we have the objectives that is so what are the things are uh, learning the objectives of this particular course using the finite element and what are the detailed topics which will be discussing starting from the historical background and the fundamentals of the contact mechanics starting from uh, the point contact uh, then the line contact then the surface contact and then when we try to go and solve the problem from the software how exactly the algorithms are going to be playing a key role in the analysis and what are the control parameters which you have to look at and these things are being uh, dealt in detail about this then when it is been coming to the classifications and the simple contact models will be analyzed and in the practical severe how about uh, 50 hours of practical duration where the theoretical aspect is going to be for 20 hours and the tutorials is going to be for about uh, 30 hours and 50 hours duration we give for the practicing on your own so that the total duration of practice is going to be about 80 hours 20 hours is going to be the theory so this about the just an introduction to contact mechanics is any clarifications if you have you can just uh, put it on the chat box
So for the fee structure and other things, I think for the basic, uh, we charge about 15,000 for the course. So there is a, a question by Pawan, uh, edge of the contact phenomena. Yes, so it can be treated to be as a point contact. So from the point contact analysis, uh, one can uh, treat this problem and then further proceed. Any more questions? Okay, still, if you have any doubts, you can just uh, friction contact versus friction less contact. Yes, that is also been will be dealt in detail because whenever there is no friction, the formulation of the mathematical expressions are going to be uh, different. And when the friction is considered into account, depending upon the type of friction, whether it is going to be a dry friction or a column friction. Based on that, what is the amount of forces which is going to be induced in that? And that force will also be incorporated into the formulation and then analyzed. Schedule and will uh, video will be available after the course. Yes, definitely, it is recorded. Any more clarifications? Okay, if there is no clarifications, I thank you for your patient listening for one hour. And if you have any clarifications, you can write to us, wherein the email ID and other things is available on the website. Thank you. Bye.